everybody, and welcome to After Chat. This is episode 9, which uh, I forgot to get the title again this week. Uh, I'll figure something out while I'm watching and editing this later. Uh, it's just me, that title I had last week uh, would not have been the title I put on the video had I not announced it at the beginning of the show. So we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. <laughs> I, did, I did give it a subtitle last week. It was good. And don't go out with a 2 gig video <laughs> No, <laughs> two <yeah>. gig card. <laughs> no, you're Tom. I'm Ryan. Is that Aperture Chat? Hey, you introduced somebody for shit, a change. Shit that you forgot to say. I don't care. I'm sick of introducing myself. This is episode nine. You should know who I am by now. Actually, you probably have no idea who I am nope. by now. Uh, <laughs> so I want to point out before we get started with everything, um, I went to get coffee on the way over here this morning, and the large chain of coffee house that I frequent, um, that's local to our area. It's local to the face of the planet at this point. <laughs> Screwed up my coffee. And when so don't I, they? They usually don't. At least this, this particular location does not usually screw up my coffee. Yeah, but it's all crappy coffee anyway, so you don't barely notice when they do screw up your coffee. I notice when they forget the sugar and the cream and remember the turbo shot. <laughs> uh, I mean... <laughs> they, 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 I was like, I want hazelnut, cream, two, Splenda, and a turbo shot. What I got was plain with milk and a turbo shot. I'd be okay with it, but I did drink it. Yeah, well, most of it. It's still the rest of it's sitting on my desk. But <laughs> it was I, like, uh, uh, and then choke it down. And I, that yeah, that's, that's the only coffee I drink that's not black because it's not really great. Yeah, it's not great coffee, but it's cheap. It's not really that cheap compared to the competitors. House, house. Yeah, compared to like an actual coffee house, not compared to like Mary Lou's or one of the other. No, no, but but I do stop at the Hobbit's Coffee House. I just was going to do that this morning, but they were closed for Mother's Day. I was kind of happy to see that. Oh, kind of weird. That, I thought that was weird too, considering there's like one woman who works in the whole store. But yeah, aren't the owners gay fathers? Yes. Okay, I'm just. Yeah, no, they are. It's kind of funny. I just I went by and I was like closed. I was like, why are they closed? I was like, oh, it is Mother's is it, Day. Is it Mother's Day for both of them? Is that the I, idea? I guess that's the uh, case. Or they probably both would celebrate Father's Day too. I you'd hope so. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we, we talk uh, quite a bit about privacy and laws and things like that in the, uh, in, in the podcast here. And uh, so, one thing we actually haven't talked about, Google Glass. Yeah, well, I guess we never did, did we? We, we never talked about Google Glass. It kind of peaked before we started recording and, you know, and then the buzz won't come back up again until they get ready to start releasing a consumer product. And even then, it'll be a little while and then nobody will care. Yep, pretty so. much. Uh, but one thing that, that is going on with Google Glass is that CNN is now, you know, they have the, uh, the iReport yep. series where like people turn in news stories that they recorded themselves. Mm -hmm. They have now put out a Google Glass app for recording stories. So you can load up your iReport app and, and start recording your story and narrating over it. And when you're done, you can send it right off to CNN. Sure. That's what they want. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I get, I like that they developed for it, but at least somebody for, that, for those for couple it. of hundred people who have one, sure. Well, they, they, they're they're putting some some bank on the fact that their iReport program, which already works on phones and tablets and anything else, you can basically have a video camera on, uh, will translate to Google Glass. I Personally, I don't care because Google's made it a point to say. We're not going to make a left eye version. It's all going to be right eye. I'm half blind with my right eye. Ass, isn't it? Yeah. So I might have oh, to it's have all right eye. I don't really like that. It's, they're all right eye. Really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, consumer-wise, they probably will do it though. Uh, you know, our 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 boy Ray, he is he was an early adopter. He got to play with the beta for a while because of his job. Yeah. And he has a press release, or not a press release, an internal memo from Google that said, we will not make anything but the right eye version. Now, maybe some third party will make a Android-based glasses piece that will hmm. work. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if Oakley got into, into that market because they have the MP3, uh, the thump, yeah. which actually works pretty nicely, and people don't realize it. And for a while, they had the Bluetooth ones that I had a pair of, hmm. which was back when I had my Motorola Razor. <laughs> I'm officially skipping that entire segment of mobile technology. The wearable. Yeah. I, I'm waiting till I can put a contact in my eye. I will, I'm just not going to do head-mounted equipment like that. 
Because yeah, it's going to be a short-term thing. It's not going to be very... It's not going to be in vogue very long. It's, no, it's, it's, it's too really big and clumsy, it and 10 years later, it'll be something else. Yeah. It's... And if you're going to pick something like to skip... not like a cell phone, you know? Yeah. If you're going to pick something to skip, that's not a bad one to skip. A so. cell phone holds all the technology that you need anyway. You're never going to want to mount that lifeline to the world on your face. You're always going to need another place for equipment other than your face. Yeah. That is your, your portal to the internet. Yeah, well, it's, it's a pocket these days. Yeah. yeah, it's a pocket or... And then at some point, it's a peripheral for your head. Yeah. And I don't think this is it. I don't think trying to put the computing on your head makes any sense. No. No, I think you're right there, but... it. It's something they're putting, a, you know, a lot of people are putting a lot of work into, but well, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a stepping it's, stone. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be... a stepping stone and they'll, they'll move that technology and that notoriety into something else. Yeah. That I'll purchase and stick in my face. <laughs> Boop. Actually, I can put it in this eye because I already can't see out of it. So, wait. No, that'd be bad. You'd, no, you'd still need to see the But it's, it's super... I'm super nearsighted in this eye, so maybe it would work. That'd be interesting if you could like. I could put it in, the, in my bad eye. You just replace your eye with a, a thing at that point, right? Well, that, that's my end goal. Ten years. <laughs> ten years. <laughs> so, I mean, ten years is ten years. I, I think that that's not out of the question. It, it's actually something I've followed okay. scientifically, and there's a lot of research in Australia. That there's actually a guy there that's a, a scientist there that's working that that's blind in one eye. Like I, oh, I'm not totally blind. He's totally blind in one eye. And he's doing research with his team that he can actually mount a camera and it's dialed in. And he right last time I checked, he could see in a like a like the brain could interpret like a three twenty by two forty image. Which well, is he, not a lot. But which is not a lot. But when he started, it was a three by three grid. Mm. You know, he had nine pixels. Now it's three twenty two forty, which if you yeah, you know, yeah, which is you know, old school webcam, but. It's still better than yeah. It's just better it's than being blind. And it's easily easily extrapolatable to the future. That's not like yeah. a, a, a limit that they hit. It's just yeah, the current it's just technology. It's the technology and, and the, the ability to the interface money. with with the human brain. So yeah, that's, that's that's where they're what they're making strides in it all the time. So yeah, it is it is, it is an interesting technology, and you know the future is coming. <laughs> so the other cool story this week that I saw anyway was the D four. Nikon D4 left out in the rain for 16 hours. So there's a photographer that was out, what was it? Alexi Frenny? Frangli? I don't know, I can't read the name. I don't know, he, he's, he's, from I, I he's from Lebanon, so yeah. I, um, I can't pronounce that. Where, where, was, where was the camera? Was, was it Lebanon or was it? Um, uh, yeah, it was. It? Yeah, so it was, it was in Lebanon. a tourist landmark near Lebanon, so he, in Lebanon. He's a landscape photographer who left his D4S mounted D4 D4 which we went over is basically the same thing uh, <laughs> le left left mounted the D4 with a Nikon 14 to 24 2.8 foot facing the sky and it was like under a tank or something it was uh, yeah something it was like weird. under the front of a tank so that he could yeah. catch the landscape around I mean it's such a wide yeah. angle lens while, while the, the, like the top of the tank while it's in there yeah so it sat for 16 hours under drenching rain and it was still in working condition when he came back that was yeah. that was the, the takeaway is that while it was still full of water it was in working condition oh. and still running um they took it apart there was water he could he picked up and he could see it sloshing around in the little sub displays and the the backwards nature of the lens being sitting face in the sky captured a bunch of rain and sat starting condensing on the inside of the glass of the lens but they they said it's a piece of cake to clean out and dry out it's yeah it'll be perfectly fine with very little effort yeah, no, it's, it's kind of crazy. He's like, they, I mean, when you're talking pro grade bodies, though, you, you, I mean, they're they're supposed. I mean, they talk about weatherproof, and they mean like, okay, we can leave it out in a little bit of rain. You can go shoot in that. Yeah, this was a torrential storm from what yeah, what this the, is this what is they were talking about, that. especially that lens. I'm surprised that lens wasn't just full of water, because as much as they're weatherproofed, sitting Face glass up. up is that's tough. Oh yeah, because it has the 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 pedal hood on it so it was yeah. just a place to collect water wow yeah it, that is very impressive and and kind of gives you an idea of what you know one of those things you're getting when you get a pro grade body yeah. is you get that ability to take some abuse which we've talked about you know and, and reporters who just throw their camera in a duffel bag yeah. and not a that's, i mean that, that's a news, news reporter thing the thing yeah. that made the story gain as much legs as it did i'm sure is the paint job on his cameras oh yeah so what what he did was he showed, he has this whole blog about how he made all of his equipment 
and the, that sort of thing. But he will mask, instead of taking a camera apart to do what he did, he masked off all of the buttons, all the operating equipment, every screen, subdial, grip, spent two days masking off his D4S body and then coated it with what is military grade enamel paint, basically. So yeah. it takes three days to cure to like a good solid finish and then three weeks to cure to like enamel. So it, you could see there were chips in it, but it, I'm sure he beat the crap out of the thing. Oh yeah. And it was a um, army khaki. So yeah. every, every piece of equipment he had, he had a 910 flash, a 1424, 2470, 70 to 200, 300, 28, were all exactly the same, masked off, coated in khaki, army khaki, with leaving the black grips and all that stuff open. It was really yeah. cool. Yeah, and, and from what I was reading, the reason he used that color in particular is because he basically lives in the desert. Yeah. And it helps reflect a lot of heat because he does a lot of these time-lapse images, which is why he left the camera out for 16 hours. He was doing time lapse, and you know, a you know, you look at it, my camera body, your camera body, they're black. Mm -hmm. That's just going to absorb and hold heat when you're out in the desert. So yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he convinced himself it was to reflect heat. I'm sure it was just a really look cool. really cool. It does and, look and really cool. And to blend cool. in, honestly, I think yeah. that there's more into blending in than it is to reflecting heat with khaki. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that's that was really cool. That is really cool. All right, so last week we talked about um, Tris Winters and his amazing battery hack, which as oh Ryan yeah. pointed out, isn't really an amazing battery hack. It's using a purpose, using a purpose built battery for that thing. Yeah, uh, so someone actually, you know, a whole point, you know, one of the original ideas of YouTube was to make video responses to videos you see. And so this guy, uh, Caleb at DSLR Video Shooters wrote a video <laughs> response and went, Okay, that's cool, but I've got a better idea, and you know it's the internet. It's all about trolling each other and having better ideas and working with each other. And his is a little bit different in that he uses a battery plate that is meant to hold two batteries hmm. that then tie into his camera. He's also he's using a cannon of some sort. He doesn't mention what it is and the weight. He never turns the camera in a way you can see what it is, but it's a uh, looks like it might be a six or a seven. Uh, because he talks about using an LPE6 converter, which is the 6, 7, 5D uh, batteries. Um, but what he has is this plate that takes two batteries and then outputs three cables off the top. So he's actually using it to power his monitor. He's a filmmaker, not yeah. a uh, uh, photo shooter uh, specifically. So he's got his small monitor, he's got, you know, which has one wire going to it and the other one going to his, uh, into his uh, camera and you know when you look at his whole rig he's got the the camera rig so he's got the rails on the bottom and everything mounts to it and he's got the handle on the top and it looks pretty cool and he's like I get 12 hours with having the monitor on the whole time hmm. which is even more impressive was this all at 12 volt or did you not see that the, I'm curious the, that's that I'm always because everything runs on 12 volt is the issue so I see the first guy was running stuff on 9 volt yep which didn't really I, I think fit uh well, it does. It kind of does because the Rebels run at seven point two. Yeah, but the converters are generally twelve volt. Like right. the anchor battery puts out twelve, 12. volt or nine volt, but you're looking at a twelve volt DC input to the camera. He's running at twelve volt on this one. Yeah, he points that out because the monitor needs twelve volt. Yeah, and the camera also should have twelve volt or wants twelve volt, but yeah. it can run on nine, I guess. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. It's so, but yeah, it's it's a totally different kind of set up because he's using it as a, a filmmaking rig so it's got all the component pieces on the front and the back and the monitor and it's all one self-contained unit this way yeah. uh, I'll link to the video because it is kind of interesting he's a little bit better spoken than Chris Winters although that's actually Chris Winters is pretty well spoken if you did watch that video it's I just didn't, I didn't actually watch it uh, no he's, he's actually pretty well spoken <laughs> uh, but uh, this guy Caleb is I mean, it's a little bit more professional setup because he's a yeah, cinematographer, he's a videographer, so, videographer, videographer, so. So, but, you know, it's just a different way to do the same thing. His version costs significantly more, but you get a better life out of it. So it's... It's not it's that much significantly more. The Anker battery costs $80. All right, then it's really not that much more. Yeah, that battery is $80, and this guy is saying his... His, his whole rig was like 150. 150 So, so he... And it lets you use interchangeable batteries so in theory you could charge up like six batteries 
and just as you as one battery dies off, just swap out the dead one for a good one, and just keep swapping them out. Yep. So. No, that's interesting. It's it's one of those things that's it's a solution people are going to need to do more and more for DSLR video. Cause oh I yeah. Know that's I watch videographers with six or eight batteries on them. Yeah. It doesn't you have to keep changing batteries every ten minutes. Yeah. I love how your number keeps blinking on your monitor as it gets closer to being out of time. Except I have twelve more minutes on that. Yeah. Why is it blinking? I don't know. We have uh, yeah. For the first time, we're monitoring audio and video on screens. Yeah, we we've had all this stuff in the studio for a while. We just never realized we could use it. See, now it stopped blinking. I don't know why it was blinking. Ask it. Camera, why were you blinking? You were talking to right. um. So while we're looking out for news stories this week, there's another Android phone announced that runs might compete with the big top of the line Sony phones for best quality. Um, it makes news because the f-stop of the lens is 1.8. So up, up until this phone, generally their 2.0 is the, is the fastest lens that you find in mobile devices. This is the new Android phone Vivo X-Shot. So the Vivo is a, a kind of a, a third party to the big names. The Vivo X-Shot, it, it'll record 4K video uh, it's running a 13 megapixel Sony sensor. F 1.8 lens with optical stabilization, Snapdragon 801 SoC processor is quick, big battery, should run for a very long time shooting this video. It also comes with a really beefy front sensor, so an 8 megapixel front sensor with a front flash for you know taking pictures of yourself like an idiot. Um, this probably won't come up to touching the, the leading one, so in researching this apparently there's a DXL Mark Mobile, which I hadn't known don't really care about because I don't have a good phone. But DxO Mark tests mobile devices the same way it tests SLR devices. The current leader on DxO Mark Mobile is the Sony Xperia Z2, which scored a 78, 79, I think it was, out of 100. That has an f2.0 lens. It's a Sony Xperia, so it's a Sony sensor and a Sony camera. So it has better software, kind of a lot of better processing and everything like that. But that's a 20 megapixel sensor which has all the bells and whistles, I guess. So it, that, that that looks like a ridiculously good camera. It's two or three cameras above the S, uh, the Apple, yeah, iPhone 5S, which is one of the best ones. Yeah. So I'm I'm always surprised at what I can get out of my iPhone. Yeah, iPhone 5S is, is one of the best mobile cameras. Yeah, that I'm, exists. I'm now. just surprised at, at the quality of stuff I get out of it when I can't grab my SLR, which I try to always grab my SLR. <laughs> you see, it used a lot for video. I mean. Mm. The guys at Rooster Teeth, the Achievement Hunter, and all that, their their job is to make internet videos, and that's what they they whip out a phone and start recording on, yep. just because everyone has them. It's yeah, and that's how they make all of their money. Like that's that's their job is to do that, and they'll still whip one of those out. No? I, I'd like to make money making videos Too bad. on the internet, but but I want to. <laughs> What's next? Well, Amazon's being a patent troll. Oh yeah. So. Amazon has applied for a patent for the way that they shoot their product shots. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of buzz about this because it's basically shooting the way people have always shot against a white seamless background. So you're getting a lot of really kind of pissed off photographers who are going, you can't patent something that's being been done for 100 years. Um, you know, I, I look through the patent real quick because it's been posted up in a number of places. Yeah. And yes, they have very, very specific things that, that they are pointing out. So, you know, I, I work in food in my day job and I know I can't, I can patent my products that I make, you know, in the lab. Mm -hmm. But one thing we know from at least the food side is that if you patent a formula or a recipe, all someone has to do is come in and say, oh, I added six more grams of salt and it's, they aren't violating your patent because it's different, technically. It's a different formula. So that's why you don't see food patented very often because mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. take much to, because once the patent's out there and it's public knowledge, it doesn't take much to knock it off and change it. Yep. Um, so the thing that, that uh, basically the patent claim only applies if you meet all of these criteria, assuming it's treated the same yeah. way as food is, you need four rear light sources at a 10 to three intensity ratio 
in exactly an 85 millimeter lens at 5.6 at ISO 320 on an elevated platform with the subject on it and reflective surfaces on that platform. So if you just say shot it ISO 400, 400 even, but you wouldn't be violating their patent. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting... I, I understand where it's they're the coming from. It's the reasoning behind this that kind of I, I'm baffled by. Well, I think what they're trying to do is stop people from being able to make exactly the same images that they can, or very, very near to their images, because A, they have a specific standard, and B, when you start looking at it that way, it's a matter of, okay, did this image come from, you know, you could be making a counterfeit product, as like we talked about last week, and shoot it under Amazon's ideal lighting conditions, and then try and sell it, and if anyone went and looked it up, they would see the exact same image on Amazon without you having stolen Amazon's image, and go, I oh, this must be as good as the one I can get on Amazon. I didn't get to read the actual patent, but doesn't the whole concept of the exposure triangle kind of screw with this? Just that you could, I could maintain go almost exactly the same amount of depth of field going one stop higher or lower in either direction. Yeah. You're losing. You, you could, in theory, go you know, 320 to 400, th so a third stop higher in ISO, and go, it doesn't even talk about shutter speed in the patent. So in theory, you could adjust your shutter speed right back to, you know, go up to 400 and come down a, a third stop in shutter speed, one click and go, nope, nope, it's not the same. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's like the... It's the depth of field is the only thing they even talk about because they're at f5.6. And then they don't talk about the distance they are, so the depth I, of field... I'd have to read the actual patent to figure out why they did this. Because what, what's boiled down to the news stories is just kind of weird little bits and pieces. I'm yeah. sure there's a better reason than they're trying to authenticate the look of it because there's not, that doesn't make any sense. Lawyers are not photographers. It's not about being a photographer. It's like a corporate. It's a corporate decision to try and the patent something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. So no, no, it's it's interesting. Not really. Well, not really, but because it, <laughs> well, it, it it's interesting if you if you're curious about how they light their pictures because by filing for the patent they put the secret sauce out there and said this is what the secret sauce is. Have fun. Oh, but by the way, if you use it, you're screwed. So. Yeah, it's. It, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the patent hasn't been, it's been filed, but it hasn't been approved yet, so... Yeah, it could just be a... It, you know, it has to go out for comment, and photographers all over the world could just, or all over America at least, could just, you know, when the time for comment comes up in a couple of weeks, because it has to be out for comment for 90 days, could just say, this is a hundred-year-old process that they're trying to patent. This is like someone trying to patent the wheel. You can't do it. Yeah, I, there's enough photography source material out there where you, I'm sure you could reference this as being existing already. Yeah. So. Just by chance, by pure chance, I'm sure some commercial photographers used the same settings for something 80 years ago. Oh, yeah. By 80 years ago, I mean in the 80s. That's, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, probably. That's what I was... Even both. It probably both have been the case. I don't know if there was, like... Who knows? Commercial product photography? I don't know. Somebody had to take a picture of a Coke bottle back in the 20s. Did they, though? Well, I guess someone could have drawn it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the main bulk of the story, isn't it? That's the bulk of that story, yeah. Foam thing. Foam thing. I didn't, I didn't have a... I knew you wanted to talk about the foam, so I wrote foam thing. So, uh, yesterday, we went out and bought more ink for our printer, finally. Hey, good news, everyone. Good news! We it's must be doing something right, because we had Bullshit. to buy more ink. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't printed that much in that printer. Uh, I have. <laughs> All right, I haven't printed that much in that printer. <laughs> I've printed a lot in that printer. Good for you. Uh, unfortunately, even though we turned the set around today to shoot in a different part of the studio, uh, you can almost see over my shoulder here one image I printed. Actually, going up the wall further, there is uh, a lot more stuff yeah. I printed and put on the wall. I have to now that I've purchased things, I have yeah. to finish my my print work. Yeah, because you've got all these frames up here that you haven't put any. You, I have. They're half filled. They're half filled now. I, I know you had two filled out of no, nine. No, there's there's three out of seven. <laughs> Mostly oh, half. nine. No, that's one just kind of sitting there for storage. Oh, okay. Um, it's three out of seven. But, yeah, so. Yeah, so that's. But, but it was kind of nice because we went down to the camera store and 
it was kind of funny as we were walking up. There's this handwritten "things are on sale" kind of sign. We're yeah. like, it's like, hey yeah. guys, everything's on sale. Whoa. I was like, yeah, that doesn't seem sketchy at all. Yeah. And Trade your cell phone in now. <laughs> <laughs> that is a little sketchy because they don't sell cell phones, so yeah. I'm curious why they want people to trade in their cell phones. But yeah, you walked. We, we took that sign down. I went back today. I didn't that see that. Was, one. It, was it not there? Yeah, they, we we walked up and there's just you know like a, a sandwich board, you know, which for those of you who don't know what a sandwich board is because you've never heard the term because I don't think anyone's used it since like the 1920s. It is the two signs that go like this that you see everywhere. Um, the uh, it was all handwritten, like Sharpie on red paper. It said, we're having a sale today. You know, 10 to 30% off almost everything. Yeah, this, this was for the digital, digital Days demo. But that was in New Hampshire, yes. but they had they were partaking in it in Providence. And so it was like, that, that seems a little sketchy. And then we went to go buy ink, and they didn't have any on the shelf because somebody came in and beat us to it. But they gladly ordered it for yep, us. And then I went back and ordered more stuff today. Yay, so. more stuff. By more stuff, I mean three little dials and a plastic housing that fit on top of another more expensive thing that I own for $80. So a Pocket Wizard AC3 zone yeah. controller. It was a good price, but it's still oh, $75 yeah. for a little plastic thing. <laughs> Meh. But you got it on sale. Yes, I got it on sale for exactly the price it should be. <laughs> so we, we did order more ink. It'll be here, what, Wednesday? Thursday. Sure. I don't know, sometime while I'm in Ohio. Yeah, I want my friggin' AC3 thing so I can learn how to use it for 12 hours because it's complicated. It'll, it'll be here the same day, right? Should, should like, better be. should be arrive up together. Uh, yeah, I get to go to Ohio this week. If you guys know anything fun to do in Cleveland, please put it in the comments. I will have this up before I leave because I leave Tuesday morning, so I'll get it up. I'll work on it tonight since I don't have to do anything else tonight. Uh, Ohio is boring. Is that their state motto? I think it might be. I mean, it's, I guess that's sort of an upside for some people. <laughs> so, did you do anything fun this week? Nope. <laughs> I, I should just stop asking you that question. Because your answer is um, always no. Nope. Edited photos for like 30 hours. I went and shot another concert. Yeah, I did. Oh, I did one engagement session. There you go. That's fun. It was funish. That's what made me buy the AC3 immediately because I was sick of trying to make that work with a camera. I <laughs> see. I would have to because I don't think I can control multiple in my camera. With a flash, you can. Well, if I get a, a commander flash. No, I wasn't using multiple. I was. I was controlling one. I can't control multiple either with my. All right. You can't just control multiple with the master flash. I can do multiple zones on. I can do multiple zones when triggering with the optical. But yeah. I can't do multiple zones with a pocket wizard. It doesn't do the no, same thing. No, you need the AC3 for that. Yeah. I, so, with, with one pocket wizard, you should be able to adjust the exposure compensation and the flash compensation to make that one external light change up and down. Mm -hmm. But because it's metering off the camera, you have to be more careful with it for some reason. I'd rather just keep it on manual and use the controller. Yeah, I'm a big fan of manually controlling the light. It depends what it is. I mean, I, I shoot events enough where I like being able to TTL, just kind of throw a flash down quickly while taking a picture, but I'm sure that'll change. I'm kind of curious about using the Profoto B1s, because they TTL. Yeah. They're, they're, they're TTL mono lights. Well, that's, I mean, Einstein does the same thing. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, they're meant to do that. Einsteins are meant to do that, too. Einsteins are built to TTL remotely through that port. If you can find an MC2. No, like I said, they still sell them. Um, <laughs> Even though they can electrocute you. <laughs> can. It's your own fault. Yeah, if you get electrocuted by it, it's your own fault. But the uh, Yeah, so I shot, I shot the concert on Friday night, which you'd think I, I spend a lot of time working in a very loud production facility, and I have earplugs I have to wear while I'm there. I never remember to take them with me to a show. Yeah, that, that's just me being dumb, I realize that. But I had a lot of fun, although this one uh, was at a different location, and the lighting was actually even worse to shoot in, and I didn't bring any flashes. Well, I did bring one, but I didn't want to yeah, just throw it on. You're not going to do that. Not gonna, I'm not going to do that there. <sighs> uh, so basically the whole set's going to go to black and white, because everything's in red or blue or green, because whoever was running the lights just basically put the LED lights on Psycho Red, Blue, Green. 
I was like, seriously, you, you could turn all of them on and make white. You could turn some of them on and make cyan or magenta or yellow. Nope, nope, just primary colors. I've only ever really shot TuppleCon for event stuff, which is worse, is way worse for lighting, for oh, photography. Yeah. Oh yeah, No, I'd, so I'm sure I'd do okay. I mean, the stuff I got out of some of the events at TempleCon this year, I got the same thing. It, would, it had to be dropped to black and white. I got some decent stuff. I got some decent stuff. I mean, that the, wouldn't the, have to be black and white. It was purple, but yeah, well, yeah, it was purple. So I jumped dumped it to black and white because I, I, was I needed to. Purple. Um, it, it came out right. Like my fashion show stuff came out great, but yeah, that's what convinced me to buy the seventy two hundred. Damn you, Matt Norris. Yeah. Uh, but. One of the things that, that really kind of got under my skin while I was there is this guy who, I'm not going to name names, although I doubt he would ever watch my podcast. Douchey face. I call him douchey face. Not to, actually, I think it's the first time I've ever called him that. But we'll call him douchey face for the sake of this conversation. And douchey face used to give me a hard time about taking pictures for other events that he would be at. These are events where he was asked to stop taking pictures because he wouldn't hand them over because he wasn't ever done editing them. And then when he did hand them over, they were less than ideal. Crappy? Yeah. And so people got really upset with him and said, just said, you know, you don't need to take pictures for us anymore. You're welcome to take them for yourself, but you're not our, you're not our photographer anymore. And so he would give me a hard time, but I would at least turn things over fairly quickly. You know. And that, that was shooting on my Rebel, and, and uh, yeah. actually, not even on my Rebel. The, the, when I first started shooting those events, I was on my XTI, which, yeah. which, if was, a, which was a Rebel, but it, wasn't a, it was like the Rebel T0. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I, I would push it to, like, ISO 1600, and that was as far as I could push that camera. And so even that's too much. That was way too much, but it was the only way I could get shots because otherwise, and that was shooting at fiftieth of a second, and they were still a little blurry. And you know, the thing just didn't have good ISO compensation. No. It wasn't designed to do that. The lens was the kit lens, so three five. If I was all the way out, yep. You know, and you know, I got he, he came up and he started talking to me. He was at the at the show as well, and he came up and he's like. Oh yeah, it looks like you have some good gear there. And at the time, I had the seventy two hundred on because I was yeah. standing at the back of the room taking what pictures. What now? And he's like, "Oh, oh, well, oh, 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 that must be expensive." I was like, "Oh, yeah, sort of, but sort funny. of, but you don't need it." And he's like, "Oh, yeah, what body is that?" I was like, <laughs> uh, "I'm sitting there, I'm like, yeah, it's a sixty, it's a nice body." He's like, "Oh, wow, well, you, you put a lot of money into this." And I was like, "Well, you know, I need the right gear to be Not able to shoot really. these things." And it's, but and it's, it's really, like, the whole things considered, it's still not a lot of money for camera gear when, you yeah, know. Not a lot of money for camera gear that can actually do work. Yeah. And, and most of the other camera gear, which just can't do that. Yeah, and that that's where he becomes really douchey. And I said, he was like, well, I, I know the guy had, he used to, he used to shoot weddings like 10, 15 years ago yeah. as a side job. And he's like, I, I never did it to make money. And then people started charging $200 for weddings and I couldn't compete with that. So I just stopped. Huh. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, well, you know, I like to shoot portraits. I like to shoot concerts. These are the things I kind of focus on. You know, it, it's fun for me. It, it's always been a self-sustaining hobby is how I've looked at it. And the day where it becomes self-sustaining to the point where I can do nothing but that, I'll be much happier. And I was like, I was like, well, you know, I gotta have the right gear to do the job. And he's like, well, you know, my my Pentax that I bought ten years ago could have shot this show. And in my head, I was trying to be really nice. I bit my, I literally bit my tongue to keep myself from snapping at him. I thought I was gonna bite through it as he kept talking. And I was like, your ten year old Pentax would not have shot this show. I'm sorry. Maybe if you put a ton of flashes on it and just blasted the hell out of the room but there's no way you could have these these bands were literally running around like the lead singers <laughs> of the two bands were literally running around the room with wireless mics hugging people and jumping up and down and and having a blast i'm going you, you couldn't have maybe, maybe he could maybe he could you know you know I, I i i should i should let him live by the ken rockwell theory you don't need a good camera you can take the picture with anything, but I'm going, dude, sometimes the gear is necessary. Yeah. I have a bad habit of, 
I have a bad habit of needing a certain level of gear in order to actually be effective at what I do, even if it's not necessarily necess even if it's not necessarily required. Because a lot of a lot of what we do could be done somewhat effectively with cheaper gear. Like if crop sensor cameras are, are good enough now to generally do it, but it's not the same level of quality that you'll get at a full frame camera. It, it's it's not even the, the crop to full frame sensor that I have an issue with. I could have done all this on a 7D. It's, it's just a modern camera. I'm sick of gear a lot of the times, but the issue is that I want to buy ridiculous gear. Like I need a 1424, I need, like that's my next big piece of gear I need is a 1424 2.8. Like the one this guy left out? Yes, when, like yes. the one that he left out, like the one I almost stole out of convention. <laughs> um, it's the, just the piece of gear that does things that not almost any other piece of equipment made will do. Yeah. And I, w I would even almost say as far that not any other piece of equipment anywhere would do because of the just that lens is that lens. It is not an identical anything that does that what that lens does. No. It's just $2,000. You know, it's $2,000 that it's not going to make back for me right now, so it's impossible to do. Yeah. Which leaves me without a wide angle lens. I just don't have anything. I d I'm not going to buy a lower quality lens to make up for it in the meantime, knowing that someday I'll need the big one. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, it's not that I take issue with people who's, okay, I do take issue with people who say it's not the camera, it's the photographer, because the photographer is the key. But there are just certain things that gear has evolved to do that it couldn't do in the past. Yeah, you know, the, the mean, technology does get better, and it does make a difference. There's easier, and then there's there's things that are evolved to make things easier, and there's things that are evolved to do tricks that weren't possible ever, and then there's tricks that were only possible in the studio kind of thing, where it's hypersync, especially optimized hypersync through Pocket Wizard, is a, is something that is its own trick which has only been possible since the TT5s, really. Yeah. Because the optimization that they came up with is completely different than the built-in and different than anybody else made. So that's its own new trick that is very useful. You can take mediocre pictures without it, but to get that shot, you do need that piece of equipment. Or more flash power than you want to carry around, really. Yeah. You know, and, and the other thing I look at, and it's not a gimmick or even a trick, it's the pure processing power that, that's been developed over time to deal with high ISO. Yeah. Well, it's... I, it's been cleaner. It's, we've, we've had developments in sensor technology and things like that. I mean, you look at the D4S, can practically see in the dark. Yeah. Oh, well, the, the DF is even better. The DF's for, even for better. For reason. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, the light gathering capability is there. The optics are there. As good as old German optics were, you hear that phrase, old, like old German optics, the amount of light pushing through modern optics is a thing, is a, is yeah. a modern your, your show. Your you know? transmission rate is just so much better now. Even on your lower end lenses, you're getting good transmission rates. Where before you may have had a perfectly you know, a perfect sphere, a perfect asymmetrical lens, whatever you were you were buying, but the glass was denser because they could only make it yeah. one way or two ways and and polish it down. And now you can get m so you wouldn't get as much light to the camera. Now you can get more light to the sensor. So there are upgrades that have happened that you can't just say, "Oh, my old one could do this." You know. It, ah, it drives me nuts when people are like, Well, right. in digital, it's not even a thing. Digital, well, yeah. Five years ago in digital is a whole different ballgame entirely. Five years ago in digital, a top of the line camera is maybe equal to what uh, our cameras can do now. Like a D3S is five years ago now, I think. Roughly yeah. five years ago. A D3S might shoot as well as a D600. Probably a little bit better still. But yeah, but it's not that much better. It's probably on par with the 610. 610 is the exact same thing as the 600 in every way. Except that it works. It's, it's the exact same thing <laughs> in every way. <laughs> well, obviously they fixed something because it doesn't have the oil spot issues. Yeah, they put a new sensor mechanism in and they put a new sensor mechanism in and 
made the white balance pick different things. Not necessarily better things. <laughs> they made the white balance pick different things and called it optimized white balance performance. <laughs> it's just different. It's not even like better. It just it just picks something slightly different as opposed to what the 600 did, right. which wasn't bad to begin with. Yeah, yeah you, you look back at the, the, the 1D Mark IV, or the 5D Mark I, and now the 1DX or the 5D3, and they're almost completely different cameras. And they're the same body, the same price points, the same, but they are technologically the, the oh, yeah. five, seven years. Huge differences in what they can accomplish. Absolutely. So, so yeah, don't tell me your 10 year old Pentax can do what my, you know, 18 month old. Yeah, low light performance is one of those things you don't get to say that about. You can say yeah. that about resolution. Resolving power for certain situations, oh, yeah. you can definitely say that about. But I, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you color resolution. Gradient, I'll give color you depth, bit depth is a whole different thing too. I'll, I'll give you that resolution. I'll give you that you could do, you could take the same picture picture on less megapixels. You could do yeah. the same picture on a crop sensor. These things I'm not arguing, but low light has been huge. That's been the biggest increase in all this time. So, yeah. To, you know, if, if, we, if we were shooting out in a field and you said I could do that on my 10 year old camera, I'd say you absolutely could. You absolutely could do that on your 10 year old camera. Just, I could do it on like a, a 4x5 film too. It's like you I, can say I can do, do it on my camera, I can my do that on a Hasselblad. It doesn't, it's the same. Yeah. I, I could do that on my FD35 if I wanted to dig the film camera out. Why? Well, see, where, where full frame cameras are right now is some of the most accessible yet high quality, high performing camera equipment that's ever existed for accessibility. Like a, a Hasselblad back, they've had the ability to do some pretty ridiculous things with full Hasselblad and medium format backs and that kind of thing for a long time. Yeah. You've, I mean, digital backs have been a thing for a while and a huge digital back doesn't have the same problems as a little tiny digital camera. Yeah. But you're talking a magnitude greater money scale. <laughs> yeah. That's the issue. It's you can't, especially where Nikon is with the used market. As I, I don't know why I haven't. I mean, I say this all the time. Nikon used market, the glass is there. It's still perfectly good equipment, and a lot of cases better than ha most other equipment that's on the market. Yep. And it's cheap as dirt because of the cinema, the cinema, because of cinema cameras, because of black magic, because of red because of a lot of things used canon equipment is ridiculously expensive yeah. as you found out by new no. tamron equipment um <laughs> hey i i am excessively happy and i actually it's, no, it's a great thing uh, i'm actually uh, i need to write it on the board as things that i need to rec record but i'm finally i've used it enough uh, yeah. to actually write the review for that lens you know not just the unboxing that i did uh you know when i first bought it but i'm actually to the point where i could write a good review of it. Yeah. It's just interesting that a Mark I Nikon 70-200 2.8 is almost a thousand dollars right cheaper. There. Isn't that what you have over there? Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, what I use every day. What I use that is sharper than any other lens with, it's on par with any other lens you're going to purchase. Even, yep. the, even the next generation ones are only even so slightly sharper. It has its quirks. It's six years old now, potentially. I don't know when this one was built. Yep. But a thousand dollars. They're like nine hundred dollars now. I bought mine for around thirteen hundred clean new or clean used at Hunt's Photo and Video, and then the price kept dropping. Nikon kept doing bad things, and Canon, Blackmagic, Red kept announcing cheaper and cheaper cinematography equipment, video making equipment, to the point where you can buy a good used Nikon lens for cheap. And it just kind of blows my mind. Because when I, when I started, I picked Nikon knowing it was going to be more expensive down the road because it always was. Yep. Nikon was more expensive. The glass is more expensive. Almost everything they make is just natively more expensive, but the demand is not there for Nikon equipment. Uh, it's kind of like the, the joke in um, the digital rev TV when they were comparing, should yeah. I buy Canon or should I buy Nikon? I love that. I love that that is such a great little, they're like, why should you buy Canon? Because it's an exclusive club. Everybody has Canon. Why should you buy Nikon? Because it's an exclusive club. Nobody buys Nikon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... 
<laughs> I'm sorry, this guy's hysterical. I he is funny. I, I am sort of sick of him watching him, like, smash equipment constantly. He, he hasn't smashed much recently. The video of him with a D800 with a tilt shift sensor on a $30 tripod <laughs> in the ocean <laughs> fucking pissed me off. Because he's, he's, like, kicking this shitty tripod that's worse than the tripod your fucking T2i is on. And he's, like, in the, in the waves. Hey, 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 I just want to point out, you know where that tripod was manufactured? Mansfield. Yeah. In like the that's 70s. not supposed to make make me have like <laughs> make me think that's a better tripod. No, that's that's <laughs> worse. That's a mark against that tripod. <laughs> but, but and it was made in the seventies. I think I heard my lens stop, but I'm not entirely sure. I also think I can maybe see back to the viewfinder, which means that it turned off. But we'll find out. Well, yeah, you, your battery was down to well. I red. think if that happens, I'm glad to know that that happens. That when one battery dies, it doesn't just keep going to the second one. Well, don't they run in parallel? Nope. In the they don't. I would think they would run in parallel and just drain nope. equally. One than the other. It's actually it actually makes sense because there's one that's easily replaceable and then there's one you have to take the grip off for, so the one that's easily replaceable dies quicker. It's the first one to go and then the second one to go. So maybe they're both dead. No, the internal one's still definitely full. It's oh. just when the first one died, it stopped recording. I'm gonna go start it up again. No, we're done. We're done. Yeah. All right. I wrote a new closing for Aperture Chat specifically. Did you see that? Okay. Well, because I called the show Aperture Chat, and it's just us chatting. I'd say it. I, that's that's so just what we kind of say anyway. So, so yeah. So I wrote this awesome new closing, and you can tell me it's if it really sucks. A closing. It's just. A <laughs> a sentence that you would it, say it, anyway. It, it's a sentence I would say anyway, but uh, I wrote it down because I kept saying it to myself and then never saying it on camera. Uh, and uh, remember, the conversation gets better when we're all involved. That's what I wrote down. So the conversation so does get better when we all get involved. No, you wrote more than that. As a, whole, oh, okay. as a whole thought, it makes sense. When you just say that, it doesn't really make sense. So, well, that's, so that's going to be the tagline. That's going to be the tagline. No, the conversation it? gets better when everybody's well, involved and you comment, like, and Like, subscribe. share, comment, and ask questions. No, it's true. It's one of those things I would, I would love to help people with stuff. I, I know enough people who are photographers, sort of, or like it as a hobby a lot. And I spend way more time than almost anyone dealing with photography stuff, even if I don't do a lot, as much as I would like professional work. Yep. I, like, I'm working towards doing more, but I just don't, you have, really should I don't be. have, I really should be. But the amount of time I spend researching photography stuff, <laughs> is in proportional to the amount of time I actually spend doing it, which is what you should be doing. Well, yeah. Thank God, I, sp I know. For not having gone to photography school, I spend uh, way too much time reading about and watching videos and doing that kind well, of I stuff. I do the same thing, so. Yeah. So, ask questions. I don't know. Yeah, ask us questions, give us comments. Oh, we'll, we'll get I'll you involved in the conversation. Tom and will answer it, then I'll make fun of him and answer it. Correctly. Yes, yes, this is exactly how I want the <laughs> format to be. You ask a question, I'll try and answer it, and Ryan will correct me. This is, this is, the, this is the new format. No, it's or, not the or, new or format. I'll get it right, and I'll make fun of him anyway. <laughs> either or, either or. So yeah, we're, we, yeah. we want more interaction. Uh, I know there's a lot of podcasts that are just kind of one way. Bunny. Huh? What? Keep bunny? So yeah, there's a lot of podcasts that are one way, and I want this to be a two-way conversation. Yeah. No. Y you don't like that idea. No, no. I'm just laughing about the picture I took the other day. Oh. <laughs> so, well, gonna, so the, the, you got to give me that so the, I can put the, it up the on ending, the blog. The ending clip of this is going to be a picture that I stopped. I stopped parallel parked and then walked out into traffic to take again. So it's funny. If you don't give it to me for the video, no, at least... No, will have it for the video. I'll, I'll at least put it up on the blog as the picture of the day. No, it, it should be in the video as the closing. All right. The closing. All right. So, it shouldn't be one way or two way. I would, like, I would like it to be more than that, so... <laughs> All right. That's Mother's Day. It, happy Mother's Day. We are recording on Mother's Day, so... Uh, actually, the picture of the day today will be my mom, the, f the portrait I took of her for her resume, because it's a really good picture of her. And, yeah, that's it. We'll see you next week after I get back from Ohio and hopefully I survive that trip and don't die of boredom. Yep. All right. See you later.
I stopped, parallel parked, and then walked out into traffic to take again. So, it's funny. 